Christ the King Sunday. Uh, it is the last Sunday of the church year. Next Sunday we begin a new year with our first Sunday in Advent. At Pons, this Sunday is known as Harvest Sunday. When normally we would all be here and uh, sometime during the worship service, we'd be coming down the aisle bringing uh, children to be giving bringing gifts of food, and there'd be faith promises in a big basket that we left. Um, we have other things that people would offer, and there'd be a lot of decorations. This year's a bit different. We hope that you'll uh, join us on the other side of the church after worship. For uh, we have a kind of socially distant. Uh, a table for if you want to leave your faith promise there. Uh, that's underneath the preschool doors. And as you move over a little bit, you'll see a Christmas tree. Uh, and it has ornaments on it. And you take an ornament, and on the ornament, it will tell you um, what we're looking for. Uh, men's socks or underwear or t-shirts. And then uh, as you move around towards that bench, there will be a table with um, donuts, um, prepared in a little bag and, and uh, someone there with uh, apple cider. So and we'll just go be distant, you know, around, say hi, and you know, kind of, well, sort of like a high five. Um, just to remind us that um, we're energized in this opportunity to be offering gratitude at this time of the year. So we hope you'll join us after worship. And that will be until 2 o'clock for all you folks at home. Drive on by and enjoy a donut and some cider. Well, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship printed <coughs> in your bulletin. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord, our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. Let us remember God's mercy, for he is gracious. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he satisfies the thirsty, fills the hungry with good things, and heals the afflicted. Let, Let us celebrate the Lord's abundant goodness.
where um, we just we start our fall session of Sunday school. It's a big deal. We present our third graders with their Bibles, and it's just a really fun day. Unfortunately, that had to look very different this year. And so today is the day we are going to be presenting our third graders with their Bibles. And of course, we've got to do it a little differently. Um, some of the kids are not uh, able to be with us today, so we're going to video recording us delivering their Bibles to them, dropping them off at their houses, and you'll get to see those at a later time. Um, but today, we are really glad to have Lucas with us. So Lucas, I'm going to ask if you can come up. We're going to keep our masks on here, and we're going to ask you to stand right in front of the communion table on the steps while we do this. <laughs> We're really glad that you said yes to coming today, Lucas. All right, so we've got some words we're going to read, Pastor Nathan and I. And the congregation, there are parts for you who will let you know when it's your turn <coughs> to speak. Um, and then behind you is your Bible and uh, gifts for you. And before we get into all this, I just want to tell you a little bit about what's here. The Bible, pretty self-explanatory, right? But we also have this book called Finding Your Way Through the Bible. And that's a, just a way to help you learn how to get through it. This is a complicated book, right? So you work through that on your own, with your family, or with us. And we'll help you learn a little bit more about how to read your Bible, how to find things in it. Then there's other little things in here. But this last one I'm really excited about as well, almost as much as the Bible, because this is a bookmark, and you think it's just a plain old bookmark from Pond's Church, but on the back, there's a whole bunch of different Bible verses listed. These are from our high schoolers and our college students who said, these are the verses that mean something to me, and I want to share them with you. So, as you learn how to read your Bible, uh, uh oh, that's right, I'm away from the pipe, I'm sorry. Uh, as, as you learn how to your Bible, you'll get to look these up and read them, maybe read them together with your family, and see what's important in those that they wanted to share with you, okay? So with that, on behalf of all of Pond Report Church, Lucas, we present to you this Bible, and as a third grader, you are old enough to read these words on your own, to study them, pray with them, and ask questions about them. Uh, Lucas, you not only read these words on your own, but you also read them here in the family we call the church. At this time, we want to invite uh, the congregation to join us <coughs> in uh, that responsive part under third grade Bibles. Let us read together. We hope that as you read the Bible, you will bring not only your faith, but also your questions and your doubts to God's church, to find a loving, supporting, listening, and teaching community. We want to grow with you in faith and knowledge. Lucas, as you read the word in the family of God, you also read it as part of your earthly family. That's your mom, your dad, your sisters. And so to your families, <laughs> we encourage you to read these words with Lucas, to listen to his questions, to share your ideas, and be honest with your doubts. We want Lucas to grow with you in faith and knowledge. All right, Lucas, go ahead and pick up the Bible in that bag there. <coughs> okay, so we want you to receive... These, these sacred scriptures, learn its stories, study its words. Its stories belong to all of us and have belonged to us over thousands of years. And these words continue to speak to us till today. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong not only to one another, but we also belong to God. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you encounter uh, these many stories as God's living word for you, for this community, and for the world. 
that I hope you'll find your favorite story as well. So, please join with me in the prayer. Let us pray. Lord, the psalmist says your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word has directed the feet of millions of people over the centuries. Your word has illuminated the minds of men and women, causing some to speak up for change. For others, your word has provided comfort in times of distress. Your word has changed the lives of so many. We thank you for such a gift. And we pray today that your word would guide the feet of Lucas. May he grow in his knowledge of you and grow to become an instrument of Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Thanks for joining us up here. said to him, get up, go on your way, your faith has made you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, here we are, uh, four days away from Thanksgiving, a time when people traditionally gather together, 
eat, watch some football, catch up with one another. And somewhere during the day, as they start to make their way towards the table, someone will start to ask, hey, um, what are you thankful for? Right? And then everyone kind of takes their turn. But with what has these last nine months have brought, I wonder if this Thursday, people's answers will be more like that time, you know, when a mom has to prompt her child after he or she receives a gift, and the mom says, with those oh-so-patient words, and now what do you say? And the child begrudgingly and disingenuously says, thank you. <laughs> and to everyone else, it's obvious that the thank you was more to placate mom than from any genuine feeling of gratitude. That may be how Thursday turned out. Probably because the words of gratitude, at least for that child, didn't come from a place where parents want them to come from and where gratitude needs to come from. Words of gratitude are heart words. The gift that you have received, whatever that gift may be, has touched you in such a way that from your heart, comes words and feelings and expressions of gratitude. Maybe even singing, as Luke says, in a loud voice. For many, though that may be difficult, as we look around on Thursday and we notice a smaller table, fewer place settings. Maybe it's a table in which the people who are usually there some it may have less food. But we shouldn't be surprised when people offer half-hearted words of gratitude, and even then, maybe half-hearted is asking for too much. But this year. In today's story, ten lepers, keeping socially and religiously distant, call out to Jesus. Master, have mercy on us, you notice they don't ask. They don't have to. Jesus is mercy. He knows what they want, what they need. So he simply instructs them, go, show yourself to the priests. And on the way, ten lepers are healed. Mercy has been shown. And when the one, the Samaritan, or as Jesus calls him later on, the foreigner, sees the mercy in all of its expression of healing, he returns and gives thanks. But at first we may wonder, just as Jesus did, um, what, ten? Healing? How dare these other nine be ungrateful for their healing? And yet, aren't the other nine doing what Jesus told them to do? Right? Go, show yourselves to the priest. Actually, it's not just what Jesus was saying. It's what they would have to have done anyway. They're just doing what the religious orders of the day call for. They're following the rules. The cultural religious expectations. So there's why just one pause from this trek to the priests and return to Jesus. What made this foreigner, the Samaritan, different from the rest? Well, it's not that he's a foreigner, although to Luke's audience, it does say, oh, even the foreigner knows what to do. Now, the difference here is he knows what to do. He noticed. He noticed. He not only did he notice that his leprosy was gone, he noticed the connection between God's mercy and healing. And 
once he realized that he has been healed and the source of that healing, he couldn't help but deviate from the original orders and return to Jesus. And there he shared his joy and his thanksgiving with a loud voice. He responded to, with gratitude. He responded with his own worship. And when we pull off all these layers of consumerism that has suffocated so much of worship today, we'll find at the very heart of worship, what all of this is about as we gather together is gratitude. The heart of worship is simply gratitude. People who notice God's mercy in their lives in its many different expressions. It could be healing. It, it could be that friend who is there to listen and support you. It's that, that moment when you realize that you receive just what you needed. People would say sometimes it's this community has been a source of mercy. Or people who have stopped by during this pandemic and are grateful for as much food as they need. And these people who take that time to notice, they're the ones who are willing to turn from their routines, the, the orderliness and, and the, those expectations of how life has to go, and they're willing to break from that, turn around, and offer God their thanksgiving. Because they identify the source of their healing, the source of their life. And so they come with gratitude. And after the Samaritan shows his gratitude, Jesus says to the friend, all right, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Greek word here is from the Greek root sozo. And it can be translated in many different ways. Um, healed, which we have here. Uh, made well. Saved. The King James Version translates it as your faith has made you whole. However we translate it, the one thing is made clear that there is more going on in this story than healing. This is about whether or not we notice. Do we notice God's mercy in our lives? And then, if we notice, are we responding to it in gratitude? Because when we live lives of gratitude, when we see the expressions of God's mercy, even when times are difficult, and they are difficult, We find in the story that we're more than healed. We're made whole. We're made well. We experience God's salvation. And each morning, I, I subscribe uh, to these different services that feed me um, articles that people are writing in blogs. I'm amazed at how often there are articles about people find, you know, who are in search of meaning and purpose. Stories about how people are, are searching for an answer to their unsatisfied life or their, the emptiness that they feel. And some write that they're looking for it and others write, oh, I found it, let me tell you how to, how to find it. And I realize the reason why there's probably so many is because many of us are feeling that way today. Feeling empty, a bleak, a life can, can leave us feeling defeated. And yet, uh, it's right here that we discover the secret of finding fulfillment to a life that is whole. And it all has to do with gratitude. When we take our eyes off of ourselves and we turn around and turn them back to God, 
to Christ, realizing that He is the source of our life. And because the Samaritan sees what has happened, he's not just healed, but from his gratitude and his joy and his thanksgiving, from his worship there before Jesus, he's made whole. He is restored. He is drawn back into relationship with God and the community. And now Jesus says to him, now you're ready to go on your way. Because you're a new person. And it all began when he took the time to notice God's mercy. Yeah, there's more at stake here than mere healing in this story. This is a story about being made whole. About experiencing salvation. And it happens every time when we stop and we take notice that we see God's merciful activity in our lives, even in the difficult times, and it's been difficult, and yet God's mercy continues to abound in all these different ways. Do you see? Do you notice God's mercy? Then let us respond with our gratitude. sections, Andrew's going to kind of belt out this next little, you know, what, two stanzas? Yeah. Let us give thanks to God for ballot boxes, newspaper editorials, and protests. For all the freedoms he is joy. Let us give thanks for diplomats and treaties and compromise. For peace in the world of for police officers, firefighters, and concerned neighbors. For the safety of our career and honor. Thanks be to God. Let's give thanks to God for St. Paul and Priscilla, St. Francis and St. Clair, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Martin Luther King, and Mother Teresa. For all the Christians and the race of our hearts. Let us give thanks to God for the scriptures, for creeds and confessions, for the songs and the hymns of God's people. For all the things our heritage of faith. Let us give thanks to God for a good creation, a redeeming son, and a transforming spirit. For all the benefits of our salvation. to God. Let us give thanks to God for purple and orange sunsets, bright red clouds, amazing animals, and the vast blackness of space. For all the wonders God has Let us give thanks to God for musicians and artists, for those whose minds work in different ways. For all the wonders God has minds, Thanksgiving turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie. For the abundance of food to sustain our bodies. Let us give thanks to God for soft beds, warm fires, familiar chairs, and open windows. For the abundance of comfort of our homes. Let us give thanks to God for cars that run, brand new sneakers, and long hot showers. For God's goodness and those of love and beyond our enemies. Thanks be to God. Let us give thanks to God for a great.
progressive immune systems, for medical innovations, and healthcare workers. For the strength and health of our bodies. Let us give thanks to God for crossword puzzles, learning more languages, and plain geometry. For healthy strong minds. Pesky little brothers, wise grandmothers, favorite uncles, loving parents, and fiancés, for the families that shape our lives. For friends and family who stick with us as the of our Let us give thanks to God for men and women with dark skin and light skin, freckles and curls, hug noses and beards, graceful limbs and ample laughs. For all of you, the virtuous and the people, all over the world, who make up the one family of God, bound together in Jesus Christ. Just a, a couple of things to add to our prayer list uh, before we get into our time of prayer here. Um, add Sabina to our list of prayers. She's uh, one of the members of the uh, refugee family that we helped settle uh, a couple of years ago that we still keep in contact with. She's having some medical issues. So uh, please continue to pray for her whole family, but specifically for her right now. Um, and for those of you, I think most of you probably already read your emails or seen it in the bulletin, but for those of you that may have missed it, um, keep the family of Jane, our office manager, in your prayers as Jane passed away on Friday. Um, in addition to that, I also thank God for all the new life that we have um, in our congregation and in my own life. Pray for my friend Melissa who gave birth to little Liam on Friday, just hours apart from Jane's home going. Um, so that's a powerful moment for me. So with that, would you join with me in prayer? Lord, we come before you this day with such a mixture of feelings. We are grieving the loss of our friend Jane and all those whom we love who passed before we were ready. We're tired. We're tired of being stuck in a pandemic and all the restrictions it brings. We're angry that we can't celebrate the holidays with our usual gatherings and celebrations. And yet, Lord, we are thankful. We are grateful that through this all of you are right here with us. Grateful that we have had some precious moments with friends and family that we would not have had without a slowdown in our lives. We're thankful for the meal we will celebrate on Thursday and thankful for friends and family, for each other, for this church congregation, in this community. And it is in and with our thanks that we lift to you those who are facing medical challenges, emotional stresses, financial worries, or anything else that adds heaviness to their hearts. Pour your peace and joy over them. We ask you to watch over and grant wisdom to leaders here at Cons in our community and in our world. May all who lead look to you for guidance and make changes for the good of all. Lord, as we enter into this week of our Thanksgiving holiday, keep us alert for the joyful surprises that you send us every day. In the morning bird song, in the smile in the eyes of the cashier, in the phone call from someone here, Hear the prayers deep in our hearts as we offer now to you with gratefulness the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
Gratitude as you notice God's abundant mercy.